Hello, hello, and welcome back to Minotaur Hotel. We're still here with Shaking Asterion. Yes, yes. His legs remain rooted to the ground. Even so, as you reach towards him, he turns his head and closes his eyes. With an odd, re uh, with, uh, with an odd reaction, you pull back so as not to give the guests the wrong impression. It's important to establish the facts. First and foremost, you spare the glory detail. Wait, the gory details, of course, and after a minute of <clears throat> after a minute, all are somewhat informed on the matter. As far as the guests can tell, the Minotaur always had a nervous temperament, which the prior owner exaggerated. Asterion had said himself that he was raised in the hotel. It's easy for them to accept his current state as a consequence of the previous manager. After all, Asterion and the hotel were in far worse shape. When you found them, and you nursed them back both, uh, both back to good health, out of the goodness of your heart. Don't worry, everyone. It's only an anxiety attack. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna just uh, adjust the levels real quick. It might be frightening for us, and embarrassing for him, but nothing is seriously wrong. It'll all blow over soon enough, and you can go back to socializing. And Greta, it's not your fault. Asterion got a little overstimulated is all. It's a big night for us, and he wanted to join in on the festivities. It was just too much uh, all at once. Despite your insistence, on the contrary, it's clear that the spunky German feels disheartened by her per uh, perceived responsibility for the current state of affairs. Her eyes fall to the floor, and she apologizes for uh, letting her curiosity get the better of her once again. The fact that you chose to address her specifically is not lost on the other guests. Over her shoulder, you can see a few other mem audience members shoot her dirty looks, eager to accept a scapegoat that absolves them all of any shared responsibility. To the Minotaur, you direct a simple command. In a coying whisper, so sweet it could corrode solid iron. Asterion, look at me. <laughs> What's wrong? As he did when you first ordered him to the valley to meet meet Argos, the Minotaur strains, but strains beneath uh, the weight of your words. His body and mind are, as once again, one again. However, briefly, it is futile resistance to your order. Still, the visible force which binds him to your will goes to work at once, heralded, as usual, by a flicker of the lights. Surely, as if you had grabbed him by the horns and the bull heard, the bull's head in, incrementally it turns back into your direction. He resumes his eye. Wait. He resumes his wide eyed, terrified stare, and once you're sure you've got his undivided attention, you speak again. You have nothing to be afraid of, right? A minute goes by as the Minotaur scrambles to respond, fighting to allow his vocal cords to regain a semblance of function. Asterion cannot allow himself to shirk his duty, even at a moment of collapse. He knows that he must answer, lest he give you no choice but to force one from him. Between coherent, breathless sobs, he stutters out. N no, master. Quieter still, almost audibly, you reply. I thought not. You bring your head back towards Asterion's face, and he leans into your touch, still heaving, uh, still uh, yeah, heaving with distress. But any momentary resistance is indistinguishable from a panic trem from the panic trembling that dominates the rest of his body language. His leathery hide is clammy, a slick with sweat beneath his fur. But you press onward, blith, blith, blith uh, and undeterred. The audience has long since gone silent, either won over by your lies or helpless to defy the atmosphere that you've created. Asterion drops to his knees, unprompted, and, as far as his body will allow, presses his face into your thighs. You're not entirely sure what he's getting at, but his willing a a compliance is far too valuable to go to waste. The gesture seems to comfort him more than the hug that you'd planned. 
so you allow it, rubbing the bull's head as he cries himself out. His arms are tied around your calves, but most of the force seems to be in the way he gra- wait. Seems to be in the way he grasps his elbows. Though he wouldn't be apparent- <clears throat> It wouldn't be apparent from a greater distance, up close it seems less that he's holding onto you for comfort and more like he's trying to hide or begging for mercy. After what feels like an hour, the minotaur's grip slackens, his breathing slows, his stomach stops heaving, and his voice returns, though it is cold and hollow. Kind master, please, may I be excused? Of course, I'll walk you to your room. At your behest, Asterion tr trundles from the lounge, then the sullen clopping of his hooves, the only sound to break the stillness. As you enter the darkened hallway with him, you pause for a moment once you're out of sight, waiting to see how the mood shifts in your absence. The silence persists for what feels like a good while afterwards, succe uh, succeeded only by a discontented murmur that never quite breaks out into full conversation. It looks like, despite your best efforts, the party is over. Hades. I assume these don't have changes. Okay. The following morning, you find Asterion back to his duties, despite his panic attack the previous night. Okay. An attempt at talking about it, it about it are met with a tight-lipped, uh, mournful silence. After breakfast, you remind him of the whole internet situation. Ah, yes, I remember now. You wish, then, for me to take you to that place I told you about. Very well. Is the master ready? May we proceed? Yes, let's go. Okay. Yeah, I guess this wouldn't need to be any any different. Um, I, I was told that this one is cuter, so I guess we will we will do that. Oh God, uh, you think back to the modern clothes you made for Asterion to wear, a uh, crafting cl cloth to seem uh, it seems is a simple task for the labyrinth. But unlike that time where Asterion apparently commanded the labyrinth to perform your instructions in your stead, you do it yourself. You close your eyes, picture in your head a simple piece of cloth, and hum the melody. You feel the familiar shifting of the lights in the room, but this time the tiled floor vibrates under your feet as well. The dark rocks under your crack... Uh, around you crackle like charcoal clack clacking together at its pour as it's poured on the bonfire. Then you jolt at the sensation of the rocks shattering and pouring over you. But then you open your eyes. Uh, the wall is intact and unchanged. Perhaps because you're so deep in the heart of the labyrinth, within its lowest layer. Regardless, you look down. The labyrinth has produced a small square of red cloth of cotton cloth, while a white swirling pattern, with a white swirling pattern along the edges. The minotaur approaches you and looks at it as well. Now that's a pattern I haven't seen in a while. You grab two opposite pieces of the cloth, uh, fold it diagonally, and take advantage of Asterion's proximity. Okay, that is pretty cute. Uh, you wrap the two tips together. Wait, two tips around his neck and tie them at the back. The minotaur winces, but doesn't move away, and just lets it happen. When you remove your hands and look over your handiwork, he blushes. Th thank you, master. Does it suit me? Yes, it looks great. Alright, enough messing around. How about we get started on the internet thing? Where do we even start? Sure, go on. Uh, I guess we'll just skip it. Uh. Cool. Finish. We do the thing. 
Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, well, that sucks. Uh, what are you gonna do about it? Dalum, what's the expression? Yeah, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. It's all, it's all gonna be fine. Did I do this last time? I did, whoops, okay. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is still, this is still just, you know, you know how it is. Duh. Um, I'll make it into a home for those who are lost. I'll revolutionize science with it. Um, I can really make... I'll revolutionize science! <laughs> it seems this realm breaks a number of the most fundamental laws of physics. It is a treasure trove for any scientist worth their salt. Not only that, the sheer capacity to generate whatever material and equipment that we want makes the uh, this the best place for any research lab, period. All the hurdles one would find in a university setting, um, meager grants, a lack of equipment, politics, it can all be waved away here. If one believes the pursuit of knowledge is a moral and ethical imper uh, imperative, then this hotel may be the way forward for some of humanity's most shining virtues. Yes, Mr. Josh. Uh, yeah, not Mr. Uh, yes, Josh. You magnificent genius, you get it. There is not a single field of science which would not, in some shape or form, benefit from this place's existence. Well, I'm already brimming with ideas on how to exploit this place. We rely on gigantic submarine cables. Yeah, a sub yeah, submarine cables to communicate across continents when we could just relay it all over this relay all over this hotel, for instance. Okay. Some people overheard it and told her to let it go. But I had also mentioned the liar also relaxes me. Always relaxes me. She kept saying playing it for the guests would help me uh, come out of my shell and bloom. I didn't know how to tell her no. I suppose somewhere along the way, she just assumed I would agree to it. And started telling everyone I would do it. So, in two or so days, I'll perform a small concert for the guest <clears throat> for the guests. Are you sure you're okay with it? You don't sound too enthusiastic. I'll just have to get reacquainted with my liar. It shouldn't be too hard. I'll, I've played it for so long. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. What do we? How do? How do we? Ma ma modern. I do like the modern wear. I mean, this one's a little cuter. Uh, and we we gotta give him the thing. Yeah, good. That looks fine. But well, we'll we'll do this. Once he is dressed, he looks behind the rest of the rest of his garments and finds his liar. Oh, right, is it this scene? Yeah, okay. And we just, we just let it go. Ah, okay. My bright-eyed lord, once more it is an honor to witness your grace. A fine day it is, and always shall be. When your con, uh, content, con, content, con, wait, count, this is count, and nance, uh, blesses this valley. Ah, to be given a purpose. What is a watchdog for with no master to follow, nor heifer to guard? I can only hope your experience so far has been in, in as enriching as mine. Tell me, has the mirror provided thee with comfort? Has your first batch of guests arrived safe and sound? The snake leans forward, eager for you, eager for your every word. Were he not coiled around the statue, he, he would surely fall. But. That seems to be that seems to bring no discomfort. In fact, it almost it almost seems as if he wants to 
climb down and meet you eye to eye. Uh, his slitted gaze does not bulge for, from you, uh, following, following even the smallest shift in your purpose. It is not often such intense focus is placed on anyone. Discomfort would be a common reaction, yet, he, yet his gaze lacks a predator's edge. I am doing well, Argos. The mirror has been very useful. The hotel changed completely after we got the fire going. It's incredible what this realm can accomplish. Is this a... Uh, okay. Asterion has showed me some of its uh, some of its capacity, and we have people working on technology right now. I see, I see. Very well. Indeed, it is the prisoner's duty to inform you of the realm's workings. His obligation must not be neglected. Argos approaches you. My lord, today I am afraid I must make of you... I must make of you a few impertinent inquiries, but it, sh but it should be no challenge for one such as you. Very well. It's not about contracts, is it? Not at all. I merely seek to understand you better as a master and as a human. Tell me, upon their birth, are humans gifted with knowledge of their purpose in life? I'm afraid we don't get that answer for we don't get that answer for free. We have to struggle our whole lives to figure out that problem, and it's safe to assume a good number of us never crack it. So no, we don't know what we are here for, at least not when we are born. Mind you, it takes years for a human child to mature. Even if a god whispers the truth to them, a baby wouldn't be able to understand a single word. I see, I see. How queer, I must say. That has always puzzled me, I must admit. I know the hero's stories, of course. The Theseus and his father, uh, a a yes, uh, Odysseus and his son, a uh, tel telemach, cha cas chas, cas, and of course Zeus and his brainchild, bright-eyed Athen Athena. But I know it only. I only know it through stories. I have never witnessed a family myself, much less a human infant. I take it you don't have relatives yourself, then? I have forefathers, hundreds of them in fact, all the snakes which preceded me, enacting our holy duty in this valley. But a family, a wife, an offspring, I am afraid not. But what is it? But what is, is what use is it? Uh, mine is a life brimming with meaning and glory, the likes of which few humans could ever grasp. I wonder, are humans merely ignorant, or are your lives devoid of inherent meaning? How hollow it must feel to go each day without the star's guidance. A purpose has always gnawed at my chest, ceaseless. My kind is born for a single goal, to fulfill this divine mandate. To enact punishment upon the hybrid who doomed his lineage, revenge upon, upon he who dilapidated the cradle of cradles. A cultured man such as yourself, oh thank you, um, must have heard the Greece. That Greece is the birthplace of Western civilization. And Crete, my lord, it is, is the womb which beget, beget that precious Athenian culture. It was, a, it was Asterion's cowardice which doomed it. The cause of the island's downfall, only then, amidst its rotten rubble, did Athens flourish. Torturing the bull is nothing less than a rite of divine worship. What would your forefathers, uh, what my forefathers, think of me, if only they could witness my performance? I hope they cheer me on from beyond the sticks. From your ancestor, I expect nothing less. You sent out the hybrid to my valley. What might you possess? 
my lord, if you would answer one final, impertinent inquiry. Why did you send Asterion out to the valley? What idea inspired your hand to rightfully reinitiate this this trial? Oh, his trial. <laughs> oh. oh, damn. Yeah, that right, right here. Uh, it's what gods wanted. I didn't think I had any other choice. I didn't mean to hurt him. I was naive. No, cost efficiency. It was a very simple situation, really. Sending him out was the most cost-efficient cost option. <laughs> I was pragmatic. I see. We have an intellectual for a master, a rational man. That said, I must admit I must reflect a bit on your answer. I shall keep this in mind for our future deals. Now, don't get me, don't get the message wrong, uh, the wrong message. There is another subject I must discuss with you. It is quite a simple offer. I found a bottle of wine, that special kind which heals the Minotaur. It is quite a rare thing nowadays, since it cannot be willfully created by the masters. It has a, a penchant for a Appearing mostly. For appearing, yeah, okay. But not exclusively here in the valley. Of course, I am forbidden from drinking it, and it is useless to me anyway. So I am willing to part with it if certain conditions are met. What do you say, Master? Are you willing to barter with this humble servant? Yes, but I, but I want to know exactly what your terms are before I get involved. Of course, in fact, I want you to listen very carefully to my condition. Oh, this was all stuff we already read. Whoops, sorry guys. Oh, uh, yes, nine terms, three interruptions. That would sound fair. Ah... Uh... You decide to be happy with what's given. Yeah, I'm... Oh, whoops. Uh, last night, after I finished run, I found the bottle of wine. Last night, I uh, finished prayers, found the bottle of wine. Now, I thought about giving it to you. After all, you are the Lord. But why not take this as a as a fun bonding moment. I shall give it to you if you do one specific thing for me. I want you to prove your piety to the divine. After all, the, the realm's master is supposed to serve them and enact their will, is he not? In ancient times, a hecatome uh, would be enacted, a hundred bulls would be sacrificed to the gods, but today's so I, I do not remember which ones I did last time. Here's what must be done. Uh, further to the east, you shall find a dry riverbed inside of an old broken kiln. There you will find a fitting sacrifice. There should be a bundle of... You must take the offering and burn it, dedicating it to the divine. To the south of the hotel is Valerie. You'll reach your hotel. Uh, old majestic shrines to the gods created for the divinity. What's the matter? The archeron all of a sudden. Fine, I shall keep my secret up now. I think I did this one before. That was nothing. Can't I just order you to give it to me? Aren't you my servant as well? Oh, is, uh, I probably did this already, didn't I? Yes, I did. Fuck you. Oh, okay. Um, old man uh, created by the divinity. 
Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. This confuses me. To the south? That sounds very vague. Worry not, my lord. Shortly I will tell you how to reach it. I wish to verify your dedication to the Olympians. Above all else, I have no interest in seeing you getting lost, so that would only de uh, detract from my goal. Worry not about such details, master. Uh, how do I know uh, that's going to be there? You can trust me. Did I do this one last time? Yeah, I did, probably. Wait, one remaining. Two remaining. Oh, can I do this over and over? And the healing uh, is... Wait... Is it the healing wine, or is it the um, regular kind? Why, of course it's the uh, a special healing wine. Uh, the bull appreciates us uh, so much. A full bottle, sealed and intact. There is enough wine there to heal him right up, I'd say. question in this one. Uh, can't I prove my piety some other way? I would welcome your faith in all shapes, but, it, but if it's the wine you seek, then I shall only cooperate if you enact this right. I would loathe to see you make, uh, see you making an inadequate offering, like the ones in the modern religions. Imp impious are, right, are wretches, the lot of them. Oh, wait, uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, what's about, uh, what's that about a hundred bowls? Do you not know? The ancient Greeks were very pious. After Troy's sacking, a hundred bowls were sacrificed. Mind you, uh, Odysseus, the trickster, chose to forego such rites, and for his hubris, punishment swiftly arrived. To be crowned as master of the realm is quite the privilege you see. A hecatomb would be in order. But then again, sacrificing the same cow a hundred times would be such a chore. So, my dear lord, I, I mean what I say, and say what I mean when I say a hecatomb. I mean a... Wait, he hecatomb, isn't this the same spelling? Yes. Do you have to question three specific things? Hmm. Yeah, I don't get it. That's fine. Uh, I'll even make it more attractive for you, since you were pious enough to send the uh, heifer out. I left some treasure behind the behind the kiln. I'll think about it. Maybe I should ask Asterion and get a heads up on what I might find here. Must you always involve the prisoner in all your affairs? Very well. Then go back to the to the creature. However, oh, of course we'll shake his hand. Okay. Uh, I'll, um, I'll end the part here. So I will see you around, everyone.